Okay, so we want to thank you everyone for joining uh, Christy webinar. Uh, during this session, we will not take any questions uh, live. So all questions regarding uh, today's webinar, we'll, you can send it to sales at christy.sc and we will reply to you afterwards. Thank you very much. Uh, we will keep this webinar just around about 30 minutes, I think, including a demonstration as well. So we will start shortly with uh, Christy and who we are. Uh, Christy has something called the services where we're providing services, software as a service around eight countries in Europe, including the Nordics and DAC region. We are providing our services based on top certified engineers. Um, and uh, our services is provided to customers with their own data centers. We can also provide our service through our partners who are doing managed service and uh, provide it as a cloud solution. Uh, we are today support all our customers in English, Swedish, and German. And uh, Chris is one of IBM Gold certified partners with a lot of award awards. Uh, for example, the GSM for fastest growing company in Sweden, IBM Competence Partner, and so on. So. That is just short background. Uh, today we're going to talk about the cloud portal. And uh, Chris designed a really great partnership with Awau, who is doing the actual software for the cloud portal. And uh, that software is now included in the Chris backup solution. So that's why I want to introduce Mr. Thomas Bach, who is the CEO of uh, of our well. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you very much, uh, Magnus, and thank you very much for allowing me to uh, uh, co-present with you today. Uh, my name is Thomas Buck, and I'm CEO of our Wow. And uh, as Magnus just explained, our Wow is a software development company, and we have special specialized on on a cloud portal software platform uh, built for IBM Spectrum Protect. So. If you take the next slide, uh, Magnus, uh, we can just talk yes. a little bit about uh, what what exactly is the cloud portal. It's a it's a web front end. It's a it's a, a self service front end to IBM uh, Spectrum Protect. It's being used by managed service providers and and enterprise companies uh, across the world. Uh, we have uh, clients in uh, in approximately 20 countries at this point in time. And it is being used our platform as a as an enabler for setting up private and hybrid uh, cloud data protection solutions. This is in in the enterprise space and in the MSP in the managed service provider space. It is a tool being used to set up uh, public and hybrid cloud uh, data protection services. Um, we are in a, a very tight uh, relation with uh, IBM worldwide and. Uh, uh, the solution has a part number in uh, in IBM Passport Advantage um, uh, in the in the IBM product portfolio, if you will. Um, but IBM is is obviously not our uh, only uh, uh, partnership. Uh, actually, uh, our strongest partnerships are typically with uh, with uh, local representations of IBM uh, partners, just like uh, uh, Christy in the Nordics. Uh, is, a, is, is, is has become a, a very uh, strong partner for us in the in the Nordics. And next slide, please. Yes. So the cloud portal uh, software it sits on top of Spectrum Protect, and uh, in 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 our uh, belief, Spectrum Protect is the world's best uh, uh, tool or engine to protect business critical data, and that's for for more reasons. Uh, it's it's a it's a solution supported and developed by by a, a huge company like IBM. So you can be uh, you can rest assured that that the roadmap, the development roadmap of Spectrum Protect, will keep uh, 
will keep going in the direction where the market uh, that the market needs. Um, and when we decided uh, to build like a, a, a distribution platform like the Cloud Portal software, uh, we thought that that it would uh, uh, potentially create a, a big uh, success for for managed service providers. Uh, and and if you are looking for to set up a backup as a service and and if you believe that uh, that you will get uh, success with you know maybe uh, uh, getting hundreds or even thousands of customers ten thousands of servers being backed up you really need enterprise scalability under the hood uh, to 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 support that type of uh, success uh, you don't really want uh, success to be your worst uh, enemy and Spectrum protects scalability, deduplication, uh, the different types of, of storage pools you can you can uh, decide on, uh, the support for cross-platform, uh, uh, you know, multiple operating systems. No matter what type of data you will be backing up, there is something uh, in Spectrum Protect that will support that type of data. On the right-hand side. You have the cloud portal software uh, uh, from uh, de developed by by our Wow, which talks more to the business matters. Uh, one thing is to have the engine that supports the backup and 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 recovery of of a large uh, 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 scale environment. Uh, the other thing is to to automate all the business processes around uh, setting up a billing, as an example. Um, multi-tenancy is another thing we deliver which is very important it's kind of the backbone of our solution enabling the managed service provider to reflect any organizational structure so it could be a managed service provider with a reseller network and each reseller logs in and adds their customers each customer logs in and adds their departments their server groups and so forth so a multi-tenancy uh, uh, grouping model uh, for reflecting any uh, organizational structure. OEM branding, so that uh, uh, if an MSP has a reseller network, the resellers could be uh, delivering the MSP solution to their customers and in their own name and brand. Um, of course, user administration, you know, you can add on all tenants, you can add the users you need, the users that should log in with the right privileges, um, provisioning like activation and scheduling of, uh, of backups uh, and plug-and-play reporting of course is a very important part of, uh, of the solution. Um, if, if any integration with external applications are needed and typically it could be the billing, uh, all the billing output generated from the uh, Cloud Portal software can be fed into the ERP solution of the MSP by using the RESTful API that uh, comes with the Cloud Portal software. So it's architectured with a backend and a front end, and the backend is, is all surrounded by our own built RESTful API. So everything, all uh, things that can be done in the, in the solution is accessible through uh, REST. And please, next slide, uh, Magnus. Yes. Um, so the Cloud Portal software, uh, as this slide mentions, is all about business. And it's about business in, in two scenarios. For the service providers, it's really about adding enterprise class uh, data protection as a service to the product portfolio. It's about uh, uh, how to generate profit from, uh, from the backup uh, and recovery infrastructure. Um, um, it's really about how the investment that all MSPs, all service providers uh, are doing, you know, are doing backups. They, they have to in, in their data centers. And, and, and this is a, solu a solution that will help them turn that environment around and make that investment into a, 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 a revenue uh, engine. On the, on the right hand side for, for, for the enterprise, we are seeing that more and more enterprises, and, and this, is, this has been going on for years, the enterprise uh, uh, IT headquarter is, is, is in a transition these days. They are, they are actually trying to, to become the internal service providers, if you will. So, so the enterprise are looking at you know, transitioning from, from more traditional IT providers uh, into to to giving their users uh, 
the, the IT services more as if they got it from a managed service provider. And of course the enterprise are looking at the tools that are being utilized by the managed service providers and they're using exactly the same tools to become efficient, to provide their users with self-service, to do internal billing or at least internal showback to show the CFO how much money are we uh, spending on, on data protection uh, divided or, uh, for, for each of our individual uh, departments. So, so really it's, um, it's, it's the, the Cloud Portal software is talking to all these processes around setting up uh, a business, uh, setting up uh, a, a self-service uh, uh, enablement around the data protection environment. And next slide, I believe we do uh, uh, have a few uh, references here. Um, CenterGrid is, is one of our uh, uh, customers in, in US. Uh, uh, they are a hosting provider uh, uh, providing uh, uh, hosting services to the, to the US mid-market. Um, and they, uh, they actually bought into uh, IBM Spectrum Protect uh, software licenses, hardware, and they bought the whole uh, stack. And, and, and they spent uh, close to a year setting up this environment as a, as a centralized solution to provide backup as a service to the mid-market mid customers. And they finally gave up when, when uh, Tim Campbell was introduced to, uh, to our wow and uh, I had a discussion with, uh, with Tim on the phone and uh, he said they gave up on Spectrum Protect and two weeks later they were up and running with Spectrum Protect, the cloud portal software from our wow and they were uh, happy and smiling because they in two weeks they achieved what they had tried to achieve in, uh, in more than a year. Uh, the next reference, uh, Magnus, uh, should be a more traditional IBM partner, iSanity of South Africa, uh, who are uh, a more traditional uh, IBM partner uh, uh, doing a lot of Spectrum Protect consultancy. They are providing uh, Spectrum Protect to uh, uh, a number of large enterprise customers and, and now with the Cloud Portal software they have a single interface where they can kind of uh, get a view into all of their customers and at the same time provide a backup as a service to smaller and mid-market uh, customers using the same uh, engine. Uh, the next uh, slide please. Uh, uh, C-Web in Italy uh, is another hosting provider uh, uh, out of Italy and they wanted to consolidate uh, their backups uh, uh, into a, a single platform and, and their choice, uh, I think they were, uh, they had a little footprint of Commvault, some EMC and then some, some Spectrum Protect and finally they chose Spectrum Protect because with the Cloud Portal software added to Spectrum Protect they were able to use Spectrum Protect not only for their internal uh, data protection in the hosting environment, but also they could use the same solution to provide a backup as a service to, uh, to external customers. And the last reference uh, we brought here today is Yavadel in Finland. Uh, they are using our software for, for the automation of, of, uh, of uh, reporting, uh, uh, internal billing, uh, uh, activation, scheduling of nodes, uh, all the internal processes. This is a, this is a, a, a clean uh, private uh, cloud enablement. Um, and I believe we have a couple of slides left. Um, the next slide is uh, really the backbone of our solution uh, shown in a, in a managed service provider uh, perspective. Uh, of course, you need uh, Spectrum Protect uh, infrastructure somewhere, and uh, and and uh, and typically for the MSPs, uh, this infrastructure is at the top level data center, so above the your cloud portal, if you will, on this slide. That's the whole Spectrum and uh, Protect infrastructure. The, then there is a, a cloud portal software uh, installation, and you connect simply connect your your Spectrum Protect servers to the cloud portal software, and now you get this web interface from where you can start adding your customers. For each of your customers, you can add you know their departments, their server groups. You can even, as an MSP, you can set up a. a um, a, a tenant or a business unit which, which you call uh, resellers and, and, and from this business unit you create all of your resellers and, and you allow your resellers their own logins and now they can 
lock in and they start adding their customers. We have uh, very successful uh, uh, implementations where, where we see uh, hosting providers and managed service providers getting to customers where they would normally not be able to get to. This could be uh, a service provider getting to all the dentists uh, in an area because he actually signs up the journaling provider, the, the, the dentist journal, uh, uh, journaling provider for, for the dentist. Now he logs in and he starts adding his dentist because typically the one who provides the journaling system is also the one who provides the, the server and the, the backups uh, of, of, of a solution like that. So um, a very powerful go-to-market model uh, with, a, with a reseller and partner set up uh, enabled as well. And the next slide is, uh, is exactly uh, kind of the same slide but, but shown uh, with a view from, from the enterprise where same setup really, but instead of talking about customers and resellers, the enterprise will reflect his organizational structure, whether this is a presence in different countries. For each country, you could have a presence in, in different regions. For each of the regions, you could have uh, uh, different uh, departments, and for each department, different server groups. This multi-tenant model will allow you to reflect any organizational structure, and on all levels, you have access to self-service and you also have access to adding users with the privileges that, that you really want the user to have. Maybe some users are view only, maybe some users are able to activate and schedule nodes. It's, it's all up to, to, um, to how uh, you want to enable your users and what privileges you want them to have. So I guess that that was the last slide from me initially uh, and back to you Magnus. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Thomas. So it shows an overview of the uh, of the portal. We're going into the demo to show the actual software and what it looks like. Uh, the cloud portal is part of our uh, Christy Backup solution, and uh, shown in this slide, uh, we have several different modules available. But today we're focusing on the cloud portal. Uh, so when involving the cloud portal into our solution, it's uh, yeah, it's provided as a service into your data center, or uh, externally it's as wanted, and uh, you will only pay as you go, pay uh, based on terabytes in the IBM Spectre Protect uh, uh, primary storage after uh, the duplication and everything. Uh, so it's possible to uh, customize as you want to. And on top of that, of course, we are providing the support for everything, the complete bundle with IBM Spectrum Protect and the portal and all other modules if wanted. So uh, Thomas, I just did this short, so we have some time to go through the demonstration. So we will switch screen to the actual portal. Okay, so now you have the screen, Thomas, I think. Yeah. So I just want to make sure you see a, a web browser now. Yes. Yes. So, um, and, and let me just start by saying that this will be an extremely short uh, uh, presentation. So, um, so if, uh, if anyone afterwards needs uh, more in-depth uh, uh, presentation, please feel free to, to reach out to, uh, to Christy Nordics and, and uh, they will be able to provide you with a, a much more in-depth uh, 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 demo of the solution. And, and if they need me to be in a demo together with you guys, they will call upon me. So that's definitely possible. Um, I'm going to log into a neutralized domain, backupportal.com. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, a, a domain used by Awau where we do have some uh, proof of concept uh, customers and, uh, and we also have uh, some customers uh, that are actually using this solution, just a few using this solution uh, as, a, as a service, software as a service. Uh, um, so I am signing in as uh, an AWOW uh, employee here with the rights of an administrator from AWOW. And uh, we see that I just need to get this. There we go. 
Um, here we see in the left hand side you have the business unit browser. Uh, in this case uh, I've added two business units. One is uh, POC accounts, the other one is my actual software as a service accounts. Uh, and um, every time I click on a, a business unit, in this case I'm at the top level cloud portal. So I will, every time I click on a new business unit I will see a summary. In this case we have an overview telling us that in, in this Cloud Portal installation there is uh, 17,920 gigabytes of data uh, in, uh, in 315 nodes. If I drill down a little bit you see the, the utilization of storage over time. Easily you can expand, decrease or increase the time span you are looking at. You can also uh, go ahead and show if there is any you can click on the icons uh, below the graph to see if there is any archive data or backed up data. You see there is so little archive data so I can't really see how much that is. Uh, so I can turn off the total here. So uh, the graphs are dynamic so I can kind of turn off and on uh, what I want to see. Another graph is showing you how much, how much data am I transferring every 24 hours for the backups, for the daily backups and, and recoveries, uh, the, the number of backup nodes over time, and finally a storage breakdown, how much of my data is backed up uh, versus uh, archived uh, data. So that's kind of the summary. If I want to dig more down into the daily uh, uh, status of my uh, backups, I would click on the status report and it will give me a, an, a list of all the nodes where I can see you know which one of the nodes needs action and which one of them uh, are okay. If I need uh, more in depth I can click on a node so if I click on this node I get kind of more details on the node level uh, where I can see um, uh, more into uh, to the events and summaries and activity logs uh, to, to, to get more details on the, on the daily, uh, on the daily um, uh, backups. I can also, if I'm, I'm, uh, if I'm uh, uh, supporting uh, a larger organization of, of, uh, of business units and nodes and stuff uh, uh, and I'm, I'm fixing a problem, I can actually go ahead and I can click uh, one or more nodes and I can uh, then from here I can click comment and now I can go ahead and in my own profile I can make an introduction to, to support emails and a signature and now I, I have chosen three notes here and I can make a comment on each note and this comment would then be sent out to my customer or to my uh, whatever uh, uh, whoever persons uh, receiving these support uh, uh, emails. I can make those as individual comments or I can make a selection of notes and I can make the same comment. The thing is once I've made those comments Next, uh, next thing that will happen in the report is that it will show up with the date for the last comment. So now I actually, next time there is an error, I can look into the historical comments made on on these uh, uh, on these uh, uh, notes uh, to help me uh, fix a problem. If I click on the small wheel next to the cloud portal name up here, that's a setting wheel. That's where you will see uh, a lot of the settings that happens uh, behind uh, the scenes. Uh, for example, adding users, uh, creating roles for the users. If I click on roles here, uh, it's very easy to create a new role. I click add, I give it a name, maybe a description. I decide whether this role is inheritable by descendants or, or only for this business unit. And now I can simply go through a list of all the features and functions in the solution and I can kind of uh, enable what I want this role to have. And let me just find one of my business units which, is, uh, which I can use for demo purpose today. If I, if I type shift F, I will be able to search for anything in the portal. So let's try to search for MS, there we go. It, find, uh, it found uh, two business units, 13 backup nodes and also one user and what I wanted was this business unit MSP demo. So if I click on the MSP demo you will now see a new summary because this summary covers the MSP demo uh, solution here and downwards. So MSP demo has internal systems, that's a business unit. If I click on internal systems then there is development and there is production. So for development there are at this point in time four nodes and if I go back and look into production then there is uh, 
a, a single node. On all these levels, so if I have uh, someone looking after the production environment, I would simply add him uh, as a user on my production environment, so when he logs in, he would actually only see this environment, and I can kind of show you how that works. Before I do that, maybe I should just, on my MSP demo here, maybe I should just upload uh, a logo uh, to show you the OEM branding. So if I click on the identity, I can click on branding, I can choose a file, and I've stolen a Christy Nordic logo earlier today that is on my desktop. So I save this to the solution. So now the MSP demo here is a business unit actually branded as, uh, as Christy Nordic. And sorry guys if I'm not using your logo correctly today, but uh, you'll have to live with that. That's I, fine. I, have, That's fine. I, have, I, have, I have the power right now. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's go down to external uh, systems in the production uh, area. Uh, I have an employee who needs to uh, to uh, look into the production. So if I add a new user now, I will uh, add Thomas back with Thomas at Ologo. And uh, I am not a system administrator. I am only a customer role, which is a, a limited role. So I click add now. And... Um, now the user is created, uh, which means that I should be able to go back to my um, email system here, and I just received an email, uh, hello, hi Thomas Bach, production has created a user account for you uh, to specify, blah, 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 please click. So I click here now, and I will now, because I'm a first time login, I will have to create my password. And now I activate my account and I log in as Thomas Bach, who's in charge of the production. So now you see it's a Christie Nordic solution. I only see production. I don't see anything above uh, production. And, um, and um, if I click on the small wheel, I don't see any of the settings that were available before because I have limited, uh, I have very limited uh, uh, privileges uh, in this solution. So. I have, of course, access to viewing my status report uh, of today, and that status report, if I shouldn't have a sign-in, another way, I'll just have to refresh this and probably have to sign in again because uh, I've just been signed in with, yes. Another way to give your users access to the daily uh, uh, reports and stuff is instead of Instead of adding them as a user in the system, I could have added myself as a report subscriber. So I can click on subscribe and I can add myself here. So this could be a group or it could be just me. Uh, again, maybe I'll just use add a logo. But I could add uh, multiple email addresses to this. This could be a support group or whatever. And I can decide uh, what do I want to include in an email like this. And now I save this. Um, and that means every day I will now receive an email with the same information instead of logging in. Or I can go ahead and send that email to myself right now. Um, it is doing that right now. Status report has been sent. So now I should be able to go back here and the status report has come in. So this is what I would get instead of maybe logging in or maybe a combination of getting a, a daily uh, report and, and having access to, to the same information through the, the cloud portal, uh, through the cloud portal interface. Um, it's, let me just go through a few Let me just go th very quickly through uh, some of the, the settings and some of the features available without really showing you much because I have two minutes left. So I hope that, that, that it's obvious that um, this interface is really uh, easy to, to, uh, to learn. It's, uh, the information is available in a very user-friendly uh, uh, way. 
uh, it is very uh, fast and very quick to set up a, a, a structure of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, business units, which could be regions, departments, customers, resellers, and, and, and from this interface then actually being able to, um, to, um, to activate and schedule nodes uh, to, to, to do all the daily maintenance around, uh, around backups and even allowing your customers for self-service on that. So users and roles, we talked about that. API access, you can give any applications access to, to getting the information or you can push information. You can even write your own user interface, if you will, accessing our API access. There is an extensive uh, audit lock uh, uh, in the solution. So all committing actions that is being done in this solution is being locked and that's very important once you have a setup where you allow server, uh, users for self-service you really need to be able to prove that a certain node was deleted by a, a certain user at a certain time. Um, the billing engine in the solution it consists of uh, subscriptions where you can go in and you can define your pricing metrics. It's like, it's like creating your products and now when you have created your products, you can actually go on a business unit and you can create a contract. In the contract, you can choose between all the subscriptions that you have available uh, and you can activate the right subscriptions. Once you have done that, you can go and get your billing output. You can even simulate what will the billing look like if I do the billing end of this month, end of next month, end of three months ahead, or this is, if you activate the billing, this is where you will find your monthly CSV billing file that potentially could uh, uh, contain uh, thousands of billing lines and that's all automated so once a month that billing file is created you can get it a CSV or JSON format or you can suck those billing lines right into your own uh, uh, billing system to create the invoices from the system where you where you normally create uh, your invoices. Those invoices using the RISTful ABI you can again throw back into this solution for your customers actually to find those invoices uh, within the same uh, interface. Um, I believe that this is what I uh, can do in this uh, short amount of time, uh, Magnus. So uh, hopefully it makes a little bit of sense uh, for you guys. And as mentioned, if you want a more in-depth <coughs> presentation of the solution, I am sure that uh, Christy Nordic is uh, more than willing to, uh, to take you on a guided tour in the, in the software solution. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, it was a short introduction of, of the portal and uh, of course we have a, a demo portal available for anybody who wants to test and all questions and go into deeper or personal webinars, we are able to do that. Just uh, send an email to sales at christy.se and we will, of course, help you and advise and open up discussions. Uh, thank you very much for today and we wish you all a great weekend and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.